This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho, there's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, March the 26th, 1917, the Stanley Cup Files were finally shown up. They were done. And the Seattle Metropolitans out of the Pacific Coast Hockey Association shocked a lot of people by defeating the Montreal Canadiens, the powerful NHA Montreal Canadiens, National Hockey Association team. And defending champion. Seattle did it. They won the Stanley Cup in five games. Becoming the first American born team to win the Cup. And the first Stanley Cup finals played in the United States. All of the games were in Seattle. This was huge. <clears throat> that the Seattle Metropolitans would be the Stanley Cup champions. So anyway. Seattle won the PCHA title. By finishing the regular season in first place. Thus granting them a trip to the Stanley Cup. Montreal, who were the champs of the NHA, would face the, would face the second half champion, Ottawa Senators, in a best of three series that saw Montreal win 7-6 in a two-game total goals series. Meaning that they would face Seattle for the Stanley Cup. Montreal was defending the Stanley Cup. While Seattle in their barbershop uniforms with Seattle, the big S, and then Seattle in letters within that S were playing. So, the 1917 season was the last season in hockey before the NHL came into existence. When I said the NHA, that was the predecessor to the NHL. So, the National Hockey Association became the National Hockey League by the fall of 1917. So, anyway. Every game would be at the Seattle Ice Arena. They said game one and three would be played under the Pacific Coast seven-man rules, and games two and four would play under the six-man rules of the NHA. Which means that the seventh person was a rover, a.k.a. a player who usually played forward and defense, as opposed to, like, you know, your center, left wing, right wing, and full-fledged defenseman and goalie. Well, the NHA played without a rover. The rover is akin to the sweeper in soccer, which Franz Beckenbauer did to perfection. Anyway, so it was a huge thing. Game one saw Dietra, Dieter Pietra, the little man of iron, as they call him, score four goals as Montreal won 8-4. to four. Also scoring for Jack Lafayette. Well, Jack Lafayette scored the second goal, and then Petra made it 3-1 Montreal. And, well, the Seattle goal scored by Bernie Morris. Con Corbo and Nuzi Lalonde would score for Montreal in the second period to go 5-1 after two. But Morris and Frank Foyston scored to make it 5-3, before Petra made it 6-3. Morris would score to make it 6-4, but Petra and Corbo scored to make it 8-4. Game two, Seattle won, even though it was under NHA rules, which the one last player. Morris would score in the first period, and then Wilson made it 2-0 Seattle. Morris and Foyston would combine again to make it 4-0 Seattle. And then Frank Foyston gave Seattle a 6-0 lead. Tommy Smith scored in the final minutes to spoil Seattle and half Holmes' chance at a shutout. Game three was played to a Hilt before Bernie Morris scored for Seattle to make it one nothing. George Vezina, the legendary goalie for Montreal, made several key saves and all that. Fortunately, Billy Kutu and Roy Ricky would continue their fights with each other. Koitu was given twenty minutes. Of penalty time. Ricky can. The Habs would hold off Seattle in the ensuing power play. However. Frank Boyston scored and Bernie Morris put up a pair of goals. Seattle was up 4 nothing, gave up a late goal. It was 4-1. Montreal was dead beat. They knew that they had the NHA rules, the one extra, one less player. However, it was an onslaught. As Seattle would aggressively go up 7 nothing, and you can probably guess no team can come back from 7 nothing down. And they didn't. Montreal would only score one goal 
and lose 9-1. to It was shocking how Montreal won game one, 8-4, to and then would only score three goals the rest of the way. Just three. So, anyway, yeah, Seattle did not engrave their name on the cup for their championship season. But in, when the trophy was redesigned in 1948, the words 1917 Seattle Metropolitans were put on. So, yeah, Seattle became the first American-based team to win the Stanley Cup and take out Montreal and all of that. Seattle played with just eight players and a goalie. The eight-player, well, Jack Walker was the rover, a position between both defenses and behind the center. Bernie Morris was the center. Frank Foyston, Jim Riley, and Coley Wilson were wingers. We could use two at a time. Defenseman Bobby Rowe, Roy Rickey, and Eddie Carpenter. With Hap Holmes being the goalie. I think I said someone else, didn't I? But anyway, Hap Holmes was the goalie. The funny thing was that some of the Seattle players actually played for the 1914 champion Toronto Blue Shirts. Jack Walker... Eddie Carpenter, Frank Foyston, Hap Holmes, and Curly Wilson played for Toronto. Pete Muldoon, at 29 years and 9 months, who was the president, owner, manager, and coach of Seattle, is still the youngest coach or manager to win the Stanley Cup. And that's 10 years younger than I am. Seattle would actually reveal and hang a banner on October 27, 2001, after hosting the Montreal Canadiens. So anyway, they put the Seattle Metropolitan's um, banner for Stanley Cup champions up at Climate Pledge Arena. Montreal had their tail between their legs and all that. They would not compete for the 1918 Stanley Cup Finals. That was Toronto being the NHL representative and giving the cup back east. Montreal and Seattle would bump into each other in 1919. For the Stanley Cup. Unfortunately though. That series will be best remembered. For the Spanish flu epidemic. That swept the world. Kind of like COVID-19 did. In 2020. And ruined the series. Montreal actually had. A few players. Either die or close to death. Because of the because of the Spanish flu. And wanted to concede the trophy. To Seattle. But Seattle refused to take it. And that series in 1919 was the only time before 2005 that the Stanley Cup was not awarded during the NHL era. So that's what happened. And Seattle will always have a Stanley Cup. Right, Jason Lundgren? You bet. Any Adam Jeff Diamond to do.